All right, we're back on this guy. Got a carb rebuild kit here I'm gonna put in it. Kinda hear how it runs now. <laughs> I thought it was gonna die there, that'd been perfect timing. Well, there you go. So I'm gonna get it down to the garage here. We'll pull the carb off and uh, put a rebuild kit in. It's just a kit I got off of Amazon. Nothing special about it. Um, we'll put it in here and see what kind of difference it makes. All right, I'm about 10 minutes into it here and I just wanna show you a couple of things. Number one, that's all the tools it's taken me in 10 minutes to have the carburetor loose. And that's not a testament to my ability to turn wrenches. That's just how simple this thing is. Uh, Phillips screwdriver. This I wouldn't have needed if there were the right clamps on the intake uh, plenum. Instead, there were zip ties, so I just cut them. 12 millimeter wrench to take it loose from the little intake manifold you can see there. Uh, and this was because the fuel pet cock was really stiff and I couldn't turn it with my fingers. So I really could have done it with those two tools if everything was as it should have been. But this is what I wanted to show you. So the adjustment up here on the throttle is way out. See how far out this is? Which is kind of interesting to me that that was the only way that I could control the idle speed. The idle setting on the carburetor, which is down here, wouldn't do anything. Look how far that throttle butterfly is being held open by that cable. This point should be clear down here against that screw at idle. And this guy is all the way in. So this carb is seriously clogged up. Um, you can kind of see some of the corrosion and the nastiness there. Um, I'm really hoping that once I get into this thing, it just really wakes this guy up. That this little thing just runs like a million bucks once we get this rebuild kit in. So, looks to me like I uh, probably need to take apart the thumb throttle up here. I've never had this thing apart before. Probably need to take it apart up here and um, disconnect this cable and probably everything goes down out the bottom. Because um, I don't see any convenient way to disconnect the cables up here. Uh, it's a push-pull type um, throttle arrangement. So there's a there's two cables here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it apart up here on the top. Focus. Pull it apart up here. I'll disconnect the cable. Take everything down through and then pull the cables out the bottom. All right, about uh, five more minutes here, and I've got it out of the bike. Just want to show you a couple of things. Number one, um, that all unhooks from the thumb throttle and just unscrews. Uh, the splitter has this little rubber band dealio with uh, kind of an eye on the top that fits onto a rubber tang. To get that guy off, you slide it towards the right side. So as you're sitting on the seat, you'd slide it towards the right side of the bike, and it just pops off that little tang. And then there was a little, um, like a metal tie wrap that was on here that kind of held uh, the cables up to a couple of other wiring harnesses. Um, and that just broke when I was trying to take it loose. So I'll just put a big heavy plastic tie wrap back on there when I put it back together. And uh, got it out here. Um, I don't know, looks pretty good. Let's uh, tear it down here and get inside it and see what it looks like up inside the bowl. All right, I want to show you a trick. See how chewed up those screw heads are? I think I've got some socket head cap screws that I can use to put back in there. They're Allen heads. But I want to show you a trick for getting screws loose that are really chewed up like that. I don't know if I'll be able to film it here, but um, if you take a, a good sharp screwdriver, and by sharp I mean the tip is in good condition, this one's decent. It's not too terribly bad. And you get it down in there and seat it as best you can. 
put whatever it is that you're working on onto a solid surface and then as you're trying to loosen that just apply, apply a little bit of pressure and wrap on the handle up here with a hammer gently you're not trying to kill it but the impact and the force driving the tip of the screwdriver down into the screw will many times allow you to loosen the screw so I'm going to try and set the set the camera here someplace uh, that you'll be able to see what I'm doing and uh, give this a shot and see if I can catch it. All right, you ready? holding this carb and the phone is in my vice. <laughs> Let's try again here. Should I drop that screwdriver in the gasoline? Alright, here we go. That in frame just barely. All right, I'm gonna have to try something different. All right, success. I've got this uh, kind of loosely in the jaws of my vise. And actually what I've been able to do is there's just enough of a head on those screws that I've been able to get a hold of them with the corner of a really good pair of vise grips. Oh, these are proto vise grips uh, because those screw heads are just shot. There's just not much left. But once I break the screw loose, um, there is just enough of a head there that I'm able to just spin them loose with the screwdriver. So I'll do these last two and then we'll get inside the bowl here and see what it looks like. All right, are you ready? I promise I haven't taken this off, so it'll be a surprise to both of us. Well, it's not terrible, but it's not great. There's lots of little chunks of varnishy looking gas and some black chunks probably from the seal for the bowl. And all it takes is for one of those guys to end up in the wrong spot and plug that main jet and we got problems. The gasket's actually not shot. It could probably be used again. I did pull the uh, adjustable needle jet out. It's not in terrible shape. But I think there's one in the kit. So we'll get this thing cleaned up. Um, yeah, look at that junk. See that? That's the kind of stuff that keeps them from running right. And if it's that bad down here in the bowl, um, you can about imagine what it's like up inside some of these narrow passages. So I'll show you this kit that I got. Again, this is just a kit from Amazon. Nothing special about it. There's the part number. Looks like it's got um, just about everything in there. It's got the O-ring for the seal. Let's see if I can open this one-handed. See how good my dexterity is. Ah. Nope, I'm gonna use the teeth. So let's see what's in this guy. 
All right, so there's the O-ring, and that goes here. Okay, so that's where it seals against the intake plenum. Here is the silicone O-ring that replaces that gasket. See there? Same type of thing there. Here is another gasket that I imagine is probably for the top end where this other cable attaches. I haven't opened that up yet. I've got some little springs and washers and a circlip there that um, those probably go on the main throttle slide and then looks like this would be our float valve and seat and then there's that uh, I don't know what Yamaha calls that if that's a idle mixture screw or if that's like an air screw Here's your main valve needle. Here's our main valve. Another washer, another little O-ring. And this little guy is probably some sort of a idle valve. Or idle jet, rather. These are jets, not valves. This one's actually a, a seat um, at the bottom of this needle fits into from above so as you increase the throttle it moves that in and out of the seat and allows a different amount of fuel to be sucked from the float bowl this is probably uh, like the idle idle uh, jet and that guy is gonna be probably right down inside there can you see that get the light and the camera in the right spot see it down in there so we'll get that guy out we'll get this guy out and what's the number on that main jet let's make sure that matches 12 25 that's what it says mm, perfect this one's unlabeled I guess we're gonna walk by faith so yeah it doesn't look uh, terrible but Boy, just um, just kind of crusty. Yeah, see, there's a little O-ring down inside there too. That's probably that little O-ring that's in the kit. So I'll have to see if I can pick that guy out and um, replace it as well. I've been thinking about getting one of those um, ultrasonic parts cleaners. It'd be really nice to have for stuff like this. I can drop this whole thing, you know, strip it down, take the jets out. Um, drop the whole thing down in there and let it run for half hour, 40 minutes and try to get it as clean as possible. But replacing these jets is the big deal. Uh, I might just stick a wire or something down through some of these other little ports and make sure they're open. But uh, the jets do the majority of the work. So see if I can get these guys out and uh, get some new ones in there. And we'll try and put this guy back together and get it running. All right, so I've got the top cover off, and I believe that is where that other gasket goes. I was able to get both jets out, but that little one uh, really kind of gave me some tense moments there. I just dropped it on the floor. Um, I almost didn't think I was going to get it out without stripping the head out of it, but it finally broke loose. This is what I wanted to show you. Look how dirty this is inside. It's nasty. So, I'm not sure how I'm going to go about getting this cleaned up the best. I've got some carb parts cleaner here. Um, I don't know if I just hose it down with that stuff and get in there with the brushes that I've got. If that'll do a sufficient job. Or, I may actually get one of those gallon jugs of carb cleaner that I can just immerse this thing in and uh, let it soak for a little while. I'm not sure. I'm just not sure. But uh, you know, this is where that other needle goes. Um, so this all probably... Yeah, 
I see that's kind of chewed up too. That's not where it really affects anything, but it's got just a little bit of a tarnished spot on it down low there. Um, I'm not sure how that all comes apart. There's probably some little screws down inside there. We'll figure that out. Looks like there's a couple of thread holes there. Probably screws on the back side. So we'll try to get that apart and replace that guy as well. But yeah, this is just really kind of gross. Um, I don't know whether that is because of these ports. I don't know if these are like um, crankcase vent. And that allows that to be recirculated back into the engine. Or exactly what these are about that's probably what they are I didn't trace the hoses when I pulled it apart but that's probably what that is that's some sort of crankcase vent system that um, allows some of those crankcase vapors to be burned in the engine you know if you think about it it's a single cylinder engine and as that cylinder goes up and down it's 350 cc's of displacement every time the crank goes around so that air has got to go someplace um, imagine there's a portion of that that ends back ends up back in here so yeah that's where we're at so far I'll keep trip trying to strip this thing down and uh, show you what I find all right so I got it apart I want to show you what I found use the smallest little Phillips screwdriver I could find to reach down inside there and loosen off those two screws and then it separates from that slide. Let's switch hands here. And then this needle. Comes right out the back. Can you see that? So that's the needle that's part of that kit. And pay attention to the location of the circlip. In these grooves. Sometimes different... Um, Displacements or different carburetors or different tuning will require that that circlip be placed in different places. So this one that's right in the center groove, so that's what we'll do when we reassemble the other one. Alright, now I'm just going to be honest here, being honest with this review. This kit has some parts in it that I am not sure where they go. This has um, a little spring that I'm not sure where it goes. That E-clip right there is too big for the end of this needle valve. So I took the clip off of the old valve and I'll use it on the new one. Um, some of these washers and these spacers, just not sure where they go and I'll be honest I've run into this a lot when I'm rebuilding these carburetors and I think what it is is that the manufacturer of this kit puts this kit together for several different sizes of carburetors for different applications so it's entirely possible that I may not need that guy he may go somewhere else in a different carburetor for a different machine um, these manufacturers for these carburetors I think are kind of like that they just they develop a model of a uh, carburetor it fits roughly this CFM range for that size engine and they just sell them for whatever they can sell them for so um, that's my feeling on it you know it could be that this also works in uh, some sort of a motorcycle application with 650 cc's or 800 I don't know um, but it looks like there's some extra parts in there I'm not going to stress about it too much I'm going to go ahead and keep working on getting this thing cleaned up and put back together. All right, well, I've spent some good time uh, cleaning this thing up. Um, I'll just share a couple little tips and tricks, not necessarily specific to this particular carburetor, but in general. Um, one is to really just pay attention, be curious as you're going, and, um, you know, look for little things like... Um, there's a little o-ring down the bottom here um, this one there's also a little tiny port in there that's got a hole that goes someplace you know this tube is important um, you know all of these little passageways do something 
There is uh, there's a little jet down in there. That's a little brass piece with a perfectly sized hole for some some sort of purpose. So take your time. Um, try to do everything you can to pay attention to detail. Get things cleaned up. Any place there's a little hole or a passageway, um, try to clean those out. I'll tell you, this is one of my favorite tools for cleaning carburetors. It's just a twist tie with the plastic pulled off of it. It's real fine wire, uh, stainless steel, so it is fairly rigid for its size. Um, you can use that to kind of get down into all of these little nooks and crannies and, you know, clean those little passages out. Um, you can also use torch cleaners. I've got a set of torch tip cleaners that I can use for this, but you got to be careful with those. They actually have little, um, like, serrations on the sides. And if it's soft metal and you get too aggressive with those, you can actually open up some of these passages and make them larger than they should be. So, um... You do the best you can to get everything cleaned up. I used uh, part of a can of carb cleaner on this just to kind of rinse it out, clean it up. Um, you can kind of see what we've got to work with here now. Looks a good bit better. Um, doesn't have all that junk and sludge inside of it. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting um, putting the new seats and jets and things back into this. Go ahead and get this thing reassembled and um, try to get it back on the bike here and give it a little test fire here this evening. All right, full disclosure, working with an Amazon kit here. I'm going to give you the full scoop. Found a difference already. Those are the brass seats for the float valve. And I think it would actually fit into the bore, but the issue is this added height of that valve is how it's retained. That little plate sits down on top of it and there's a screw that retains it to hold that seat up in. So with this one, the only thing that would hold it up into the hole there would be the pressure of that O-ring. And I'm not sure I'm okay with that. Um, I wasn't having issues with the float overflowing. This one actually doesn't look to be in terrible shape, so I think I'm going to go ahead and put it back together. And we'll try and reuse this seat. Um, worse come to worse. Um, you know, if, if worse come to worse, I can always pull this thing apart again pretty quickly and um, try something different. But I'm going to try and see if I can get an O-ring that will fit on here tightly enough to give me a pretty positive seal. I don't know if the one that was on that other float seat will do it, or if I'll have to go raid the spare parts bin. But um, I'm going to go ahead and try and put it back together using this guy. Wanted you to be aware. Alright, so I've got this thing about ready for the float bowl to go back on. And I caught a couple little details here. I'm not really sure what they mean, but I did catch them. Um, on this bowl... There are two wells, for lack of a better term, right here and right here. They actually sink down in. Actually, there's another one here. They sink down into the casting. And it appears that they're to be full of fuel somehow. I don't think that there's any kind of a passage that connects them done the best I could to try and clean the walls of the casting to try and see if there was anything in there that uh, like connected them but both of those were just full of grit there was a bunch of sand and junk down in the bottom there so I cleaned it out as best I can I'm not really sure what those do so if you know and you happen to see this video Post it down in the comments. What are these little holes for? This one, it actually looks like there's a little relief in the face of the, the float bowl. So it's like once the float bowl is full to a point with fuel, it fills that little pit. I'm not sure what for. Uh, it's like a reserve bowl or something. I don't know if it's for when you're on uh, some kind of crazy angles or what. So if you know, post it down in the comments. 
All right, well, I've got it back together. Get the carburetor back in. All the lines hooked up. Um, got the throttle cable back into place and hooked up. Turn the fuel on. It's not leaking fuel everywhere. So I think I'm going to try and fire this thing up. So let me set the camera someplace where you can see and hear. And we'll see if I can get this thing to start. All right, here we go. That seems to be progress. Um, however, I'm still not satisfied. Um, it does seem to be running better, but it's not what it should be. It um, still has very little power, and um, I don't know. I'm just not. I'm not thrilled. It uh, seems to be taking a lot more fuel to idle than it should. And when you get on the gas, it just seems like it's just all loaded up. It just uh, really hesitates. It's almost as though the timing is off. So I may have to dig into this a little bit further and see what we need to do about timing. I really um, had great hopes that that was going to take care of it, and it does seem better. It idles better, um, but it still just doesn't have the power that it should. So, not done yet, but um, I think we're making progress. At least that's one more thing we can mark off the list. That's it for tonight, anyway. It's getting late, and I'm probably upsetting my neighbors. Thanks for watching.